Thanks for watching this video. We're going to go over Google Analytics experiments today, which is very similar to Google Website Optimizer, if you're familiar with that tool. But that tool has been sunsetted by Google, and so now all of the functionality, or the majority of the functionality in Google Website Optimizer is now available inside of Google Analytics, which is really convenient. And I'm going to walk you through today how you can use Google Analytics now for your A-B testing. It's important to note, though, that you can only do A-B testing at this point with Google Analytics. You cannot do multivariate testing, which was uh, also a feature of Google Website Optimizer previously. So right now, it's just A-B testing. Um, so we're going to walk through how to do that today. First, you want to go ahead and log into Google Analytics into your account. And what you can see here is uh, you usually are sent to this screen by default with your visitor overview. And then what you want to do is go down to the content uh, link on the left-hand navigation bar. And if you scroll down, you'll see experiments under content. So I'm going to select that. We have two experiments in our um, Google Website Optimizer, I'm sorry, our Google Analytics uh, experiments. And you'll see that one is finished and one is currently running. I'm going to show you how to create a new experiment. And it's very simple, very straightforward. And then how you can look at the data uh, as an experiment is running and then once it's completed. So first we're going to want to go ahead and go to create experiment. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put in the main page or the A page, the, the original version URL for the page that you want to test. So in this case we're going to put in uh, the home page for Search Mojo and I'm going to click start. Now what Google does when it takes me to the next page, you'll see there's a thumbnail there of the page that is in question, version A, and I can go ahead and also um, name my experiment on this page. So I'm going to put home page test. Then I can go ahead and put my version B in here as well. I can give them also both version A and B different page names. So if I don't want to call it original and variation, I can hit call one home page one, home page two, whatever I choose. I can, I can type that in there. So let me go ahead and type in my, my version two. And note that you're going to have to make sure that you have a separate version of the page, so a B version of the page, and that that version is actually live when you're ready to do the testing. So here's my version B page, and it has different content on it. And now I'm going to want to test these two against each other. Um, I can also do more than just A-B testing. I can test multiple variations of the page. Each one requires its own page, though. So I can do A-B-C testing, A-B-C-D. It's up to me. Just note that when you add more variations, the more variations you add, the longer the test may take because you need a larger sample size to really determine one winner from those uh, tests. So I'm just going to do A-B testing today and then I'm going to go on to the next step. I can also save this experiment for later if I don't have time to set it all up right now, but Google will save this experiment throughout at every step, so if I have to walk away, it still will be saved. So next step. Google then takes me to um, choose which goal I want to improve. So instead of in the old Google Website Optimizer, you would actually have a conversion type and you'd have to put code on that conversion page to track the conversion. Instead, Google Analytics just uses the goals you've already set up in Google Analytics, which is really handy because it's one less piece of code you actually have to add to the pages. It's really, really handy. So in my case, um, I'm going to set up a leads goal. The other nice thing about this is some Sometimes your goals can ha can be tracked to more than one page. So like if you have multiple thank you pages and that kind of thing, um, this is really handy because it can be multiple uh, people coming to um, reach that particular goal. So you can just pick whatever goal. It could be leads, it could be a newsletter sign up, it could be any number of things. So whatever your goal is for this, you want to add that here, just select from the down the drop down menu. If you haven't created a goal yet, however, you can also add one right from this screen and go ahead and create a new goal. We're not going to go through that step today, but you can go ahead and create new goals directly from this page. The other thing that's really handy is you can also tell it what percentage of your visitors you want to have included in that particular experiment. So because this is my home page, I may, and lots and lots of people come through the home page, I may not want to show 100% of my visitors the A-B test. I may be only want to show 25% or what have you. So there's a drop down here I can also use to show only a percentage of my visitors this particular test, so maybe not everyone's going to get it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and do 100% though. Then what we can do is we can actually add some notes and some information here. We can send ourselves email notifications and so forth. Um, I can rewrite 
variation is different URLs and reports and things like that. I'm not going to take those steps today. I'm just going to do a basic experiment, not any of the bells and whistles. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next step. The next page Google takes me to is very similar to what we have with Google Website Optimizer. You have to add code to specific pages to get the experiment up and running. However, the benefit of Google Analytics is that you don't have to add code to every page inside of the experiment. Um, because your A version and your B version should already have Google Analytics code on them for page tracking, you don't have to add tracking code to those. That's one step saved. And then the other thing you don't have to do is you don't have to add code for the conversion page what, to track the conversion because that's a goal. So the only place you actually have to add conversion or any code for the experiment, and I'm going to click on, I'm going to add the, the code myself, is this script code right here. And what this code does is you put it on the top before the head tag, the opening head tag, of your version A page. So in my case, my home page. And the reason you do that is because when visitors come to this page, it tells Google Analytics, should this person see version A or should this person see version B? And so it redirects them to version B if they should see that version. And you want to do that before they see anything on, on version A. You don't want them seeing anything on version A if they really should be seeing version B. So this code must go at the very, very top of the page, tippy top of the page of code so that it can do its redirecting and nothing fires off on the page uh, before it gets redirected. So let's assume that I have put this particular code on my page. The next thing I would do is I would go ahead back to my uh, experiments menu here and you see my, my test here that's in um, setup mode. You can see here I've got two tests running. So let's take a look, or I have one running and one that's ended. Let's take a look at this landing page headline test that's ended and Google has found a winner and let's take a look at the stats for that. Now, what Google has done is it has taken what it thinks is a, an ample sample size and it has decided that I have a winner based on the statistics it's found from these two pages. In this particular test, we were doing a landing page, one that had a longer headline and one that had a shorter headline. And so we have an original and a variation. The variation was the one with the shorter headline and the original had a longer headline. So if you look at the information here, what you'll see here is that um, the conversion rate for these pages, um, the conversion rate for the shorter headline page, variation one, was almost double what the one was for the original page. And it, as you can see, it has 65% uh, lift in that particular page. So you have a probability of it outperforming the original on a regular basis of 97.55%. So Google felt confident that it was the winner by having, with having the shorter headline. We can also take a look over at um, the other experiment I have running, which is nonprofit webinar test. So this is running for a nonprofit webinar we have coming up. And what you'll see here is again the original versus the variation. Now the conversion rate is much, much higher on these. Um, but you can see that there's already a 98.87% probability that on this page the um, variation one will win. And this particular um, test is a test about content and it's about how much content is shown on the page, bullet points versus more verbiage. And so you can see that my variation one is doing very, very well and I expect it likely will win. So um, you can run these tests very, very quickly. It, it doesn't take terribly long, but Google runs them for at least two weeks. So plan that when you're thinking about doing tests so you know how long you need to be doing testing and how many visitors need to be coming to the page. But as you can see here, um, the, the previous test I showed you ran only about two to three weeks and then there was a winner determined. So you can test very quickly and easily. Now what you do need to re remember though again is every variation that you add. A, B, C, D, E, as many pages you add into that test, the more pages, probably the longer the experiment will take to determine a winner. Um, depends on how many visitors you may get to that page. And so um, you can also take a look at these stats and see things like site usage. You can see goal sets. Um, you can change things out, like don't just look at the conversion rate, you can look at other um, goal sets as well. So it's really fascinating to come in here and take a look at um, what these people are doing on the site and so forth and how they're responding. And so it's a great tool, really glad that Google added it to Google Analytics because I have to say it's much easier to implement. The only drawback is, again, that you can't really do multivariate testing at this time, but it really does. Uh, reduce the amount of code you have to add, and it makes it much more simpler to implement if you're already using Google Analytics.